You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, assuming me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a new Let's Play game called Inter Furry World. Yep, it's another isekai, because y'all know how much I love isekais, so let's go ahead and just jump right back in. Um, this is a smaller project, I'm very interested to see where it leads to. Um, the, the, it was a single developer, but now he apparently has a team helping him, so uh, this should get, um, hopefully, more regular updates. Um, and I want to shine a spotlight on it, because I think that I like what I see. Well, I like what I've seen so far, and I think that the, uh, the team could use definitely use more support in getting the word out about their game. So there I am. I aim to please. All right, guys and gals, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's begin. Let's enter this furry world. Welcome to the game, my. Welcome to my game, player. Hope you are having fun. But before you can start, you have to choose a name. In order to make the in order to make the game accessible to everyone, the playable character is gender neutral thus giving the possibility of imagining them as a boy, a girl, or any gender. I will just use the pronoun they, them to designate the character that you will embody. You can press enter, you can press the enter button on your keyboard and skip the name option and start the game using the default name. What is your name? Um... Let's see... How about Eric? <clears throat> well, maybe I should play as a gender-neutral character. That should be, that would be interesting. Okay, let's just, uh, okay, we'll play as a default. Jesse, okay, there you go. Name Jesse, sure. <clears throat> Let your story begin. The trip was going wonderfully, with no apparent hiccups. The sun shone bright, brightly. Only a few clouds dotted the sky, and although I'm no expert, it was easy for me to say that nothing foreshadowed what was to come. Ow, my ears! Oh, wow, it's music, okay. Alright. <clears throat> a raging storm came out of nowhere. There were no warnings for high winds or mentions of dark clouds. Nothing. The blinding lightning was quickly followed by deafening thunder. Signs the storm was very close to us. There's no way the airline knew that knew about the storm. If the forecast had mentioned something this bad, they would have canceled the flight for sure. Screams and shouts of panic filled the air. Through all the noise, I heard the captain over the intercom. Please don't panic. Please fasten your seatbelts for your safety. We are now entering up. A strange interference garbled the captain's voice. Stranger still, the interference flared up with lightning flashed outside. Dangerous! The situation is perfectly under control! What was that? A an explosion? Don't be afraid. You mustn't- ah! After a flash of blinding light from the explosion, everything faded to black. Despite my head feeling like it was split in two, I opened my eyes, my numb body preventing me from moving. It was night, and I was on a beach. How long had I slept? Ugh, my head! It feels so bad! Day one. <laughs> After what feels like a few seconds later, I wake to the gentle rush of waves and a cold morning breeze. I feel the sand beneath my body. Then another sound catches my attention. It sounds like a, a voice? I barely hear it, like they're whispering at me from a mile away. I wonder what it could be saying. The fog surrounding my mind slowly clears as I regain my senses. Soon the whisper grows louder until I finally hear what it's saying. Hey, wake up! It's morning! Time to get up, Sleeping Beauty! Morning, but the last thing I remember is being on the beach at night. How long was I out for? Oh, hello there. When I finally open my eyes, the first thing I see is some kind of animal with beige and caramel fur. It looks worried and... Ah, you're finally awake! Are you alright? I, I found you all alone in the beach. We should do an Australian accent for him. Yes, I'm fine, thanks. I have... What the... What's that? A talking animal? Hey, are you okay? You seem shaken. So I'm not dreaming. There's indeed a talking animal right in front of me. How can that be? I must have hit my head hard. Yes, I'm good, thank you. I think that I hurt my head more badly than I thought. What are you, by the way? The creature smiles wide. I can't help but focus on the sharp fangs. I'm not sure what he is, but he looks like some sort of kangaroo. Am I right, though? He has those canine-looking fangs. Oh, pardon my lack of courtesy. <clears throat> I don't think that was Australian sounding. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> oh, pardon my lack of courtesy. My name's Rich. I'm a Lomba I'm a Lombaroo. Is that a Lombax mixed with a fucking kangaroo? What? <laughs> a a lom Lomba Lombaroo. Lombaroo. I know my species ain't from around here, but you must have heard of us. 
<clears throat> I don't think I'm, I think I'm doing more of a southern accent right now. I don't know why. Huh. <clears throat> By the way, what is your name? I gotta say, I've never seen a monkey without fur before, and I gotta say, it's pretty funny to see. <laughs> and you don't have a tail. What happened to it? Well, my name is Jesse, and I... Hey, wait, what did you call What did you call me? I'm not a monkey, I'm a human. Rich, Rich seems surprised by my statement, staring at me with wide eyes, his long tail straight out behind him, his ears turned in my direction like an attentive dog. A human? Stop playing with me, everybody knows they're just a legend. Hmm, should I insist in telling the truth? If this isn't a dream, it might be dangerous to tell him. He's a stranger, after all. I'm a human. You said it yourself. I don't have a tail, do I? Hmm, let me check something. No, God! <laughs> Suddenly, Bridge steps towards me, his muzzle only inches from my face. Then he sniffs me. I find myself comparing him to a dog again, with how he's trying to learn about a new person through his nose. What? Too close! T too close! He's sniffing me! And I'm seeing him up close. His fur looks soft, and he's kind of cute now that I think about it. I feel my cheeks heating up, blushing because the lombru is so close. Why am I blushing? Rich takes a few steps back when he's done smelling me. Hmm, I've never smelled anything like you before. That's clearly not the smell of a monkey. He suddenly jumps back a bit, staring at me wide-eyed, as if he'd seen a ghost. Wait, you're a human? For real? Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to tell him after all. W what would he do if he tell- what would I do if he tells other people? Yes, like I said, I'm human. Honestly, I have no idea how, it got, how I got to this beach. Last thing I remember is that I was on a trip and suddenly a storm hit us. Then I woke up here. Hmm, I, I see. Rich scratches his chin, looking up thoughtfully. I'm a little nervous about what he's going to say about all this. Do you think I'm crazy? You know, you should come to my house for a few for now. At least you'll be safe. That catches me completely off guard. I stand there, blinking, staring, staring. I expected anything but that. Uh, at your place, but why? We're on a beach, you know. This is a public place. People will start showing up any minute now. Oh, yes, you're right. Great, you won't regret it. I'm immediately suspicious of people who say that, like, after after they, they state they're going to do something. I, hey, you won't regret it. Why would you think I would regret it in the first place? <laughs> hmm. Rich smiles wide again, and I can't help but looking at how sharp his white canines are again. What kind of mess have I gotten myself into? After that, Rich helps me up from the sand. The fur on his hand is quite soft as I thought. It feels pretty good. Once I'm up, I dust the sand off my clothes. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Once my clothes are clean again, well, as clean as they can be after a wreck, I follow Rich to the nearest street. A question, a question then comes to my mind. Did I lose my wallet? Where I, where I kept all my cards? I put my hand in my pocket, and to my relief, it's there. I wonder if my cards will work here. I really hope they do. I mention this to the furball, who nods before taking me to an ATM. I try my debit card. To my surprise, it works. I can't see the amount of money in my account, but just knowing that it works makes me feel better. At least with this, I won't be too dependent on Rich, and I won't be starving either, which is a good thing. After this, the Lombru leads me to his house. The entire way, he looks over his shoulder from time to time, as if to make sure I'm still there. I wonder why he seems so nervous. It's not like I'm going to run away. I have nowhere to go, after all. There aren't many people outside at this hour. It's still early, and more importantly, it's Sunday. People are probably having a, grace, a graceful morning. The few people I could see are, as I thought, anthropomorphic animals, just like Rich. Although, I don't see any other Lombaru. After a few minutes of walking, we finally arrive at Rich's house. It looks nice. A small one-story home with a red brick front. Oh, that is a nice place. It's probably some kind of stock image, though. I don't know. They might, they might have a... The, the creator might have a really fucking nice house. Who knows? Rich opens the door to let me in first, entering the living room. I can't help but look around a bit. There's a futon used as a couch, but it's... There's a futon used as a, as a, used as a couch, but as a bed for guests. Okay. On a small desk, there was a television with some gaming consoles, and the games were neatly put in order. Welcome to my den! It's not much, but at least you'll be safe here. Thanks, Rich. You're really nice. You're welcome. God, he is cute. When I think about it, Rich has a weird accent. His O's are pronounced funny. His O's are too. And he shortens a few words. I can't. I can tell. Also, tell that he seems to force himself to not demonstrate too much of his speech patterns. Probably to make communication easier. In my world, there are dialects of English. Maybe it's the same here. Make yourself at home. I have a guest room you can use. I'll give you clean blankets. Don't worry about it. 
I nodded with a slight smile, looking around. Looks like I'm going to be staying here for a while. So I might as well take the opportunity to get to know my surroundings. The house, while not very big, is rather cozy. Far from a five-star hotel, but it's decent. There's loose fur scattered here and there, but considering the owner of the place, that's not too surprising. You won't be able to stay here all the time, though. Not for very long. I'm still in high school, and I don't suppose you'll want to stay in the house all day. How old are you, anyway? Rich is in high school? It's true, he doesn't look very old, although it's kind of hard to tell since he's the only Lombaroo I've ever seen in my life. I'm 18. Why? Rich smiles his big smile, as though he likes my answer. His big tail wags from side to side like an excited dog. Oh, great! I'll be able to enroll you in my school, then. We'll go together. Wait, what? But I don't have my papers with me, just some cards, and I come from nowhere. They won't accept me like this. I'm a stranger. Rich has a gleam in his eye that doesn't bode well. Did he even hear me? Let me handle it. You'll see. Without another, <laughs> without another word, he suddenly runs out of the house, leaving me speechless. He didn't ask me if I was okay with that. Should I follow him? I know absolutely nothing about this city, or even about this world. Rich is definitely up to something. I'm going to follow him quietly to see what he's up to. Oh, Rich. I walk over to the window so I can see the Lombaroo walking down the street. I make sure he's far enough away to not notice me before I follow. Some people look at me strangely as I walk, probably thinking I'm some kind of furless monkey or something. I even see a mother cow hiding her son's eyes while looking at me with disdain. I swallow nervously, feeling uncomfortable with all those eyes on me. I try to ignore it. After walking for a few minutes, Rich turns into an alley. I run to catch up with him, but it's too late. I lost the Lombaroo! Oh, well, that's pretty. I grumble, looking left and right. To my left is a dark alley. It feels rather unfriendly, probably the perfect place for an ambush. Ahead of me is a path that leads to a street crowded with people. Probably a main street or something like that. It'll definitely be hard to find Rich there. With that crowd, if he went that way, of course. Finally, to my right, I feel a cool wind. It's not unpleasant, but with not, no fur to protect me from the cold, I can't help but shiver at the sudden change in temperature. Which path should I take? Oh! Oh! What? What? Um... Yeah, let's die. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot! I don't like it at all, but in movies, a dark path is always the right choice. What? No, it's no! No! I cautiously step into this funeral... This... Funereal, malevolent, and unpleasant place. Walking slowly, I shiver a shiver of fear runs through my body. I look around me, paying attention to everything. Any sound I might hear. Any suspicious movement. Whatever might happen, I'm alert and ready to run like hell. After several minutes of walking, which leaves me feeling like I'd run a marathon, I come to an open area with an old hangar that looks abandoned. There are several broken windows, while others are boarded up. I sigh, thinking I might have taken a wrong turn, but as I turn to leave, I see Rich. After looking around, likely making sure no one was watching, he knocks He knocks on the door. After a few seconds, someone opens it and lets him in. I knew he was up to something! Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder what happens if you, uh... No game. No. You're not. No. No. There. See? Look at that. Alright, let's see that. I'm gonna take the path to the center. Even though there are a lot of people there, I should be able to see his big ears through the crowd. Oh. Nice. I continue through the alley until I reach the street. Contrary to what I thought, it's not the main street, but a school street. People pass by with their children on their way to the nearby park, a large wooded area just behind the building. I look around, hoping to see Rich, but with so many people I can't find him. Maybe I took a wrong turn? I'm about to return to the hairball to the hairball house after searching for a few minutes, I hear a strange noise coming from my left. It sounds like it sounds like someone being shaken down. Should I go go and see? It could be dangerous. Wow, there's a lot of choices in this. My curiosity gets the better of me, and I decide to go see what's happening. Once I'm close to where the noises are coming from, I hide behind a corner, and I see... A dragon? They exist in this world? I never thought I would see one in my life! Oh. He's holding some silver bills in his hand, with a big evil grin as he watches a goat run away, terrified. The dragon walks towards another alley. I quietly follow him, curious to see what he's up to now that he had robbed someone. He stops near a tigress. She looks old, and more importantly, homeless. He's going to attack her next. As I'm gearing up to intervene, much to my surprise, he gives her his freshly collected money. Here you go. You can buy food. The old woman gives him a warm, thankful smile, which appears to make the dragon uncomfortable. He crosses his arms and turns away. Aww! Is he blushing? Maybe I'm imagining things. This is just between us. You never saw me. He leaves with a small grunt of frustration. I blink a few times, not sure what I had just witnessed. I remember why I'm here in the first place. As my investigation turns up nothing, I sigh and head back to Rich's house. I settle down on the futon, grab the remote, and turn on the TV. 
Alain Baru comes back two hours later with an envelope, which he places on the table. He bakes a frozen pizza from his freezer, which we eat together. Alright, so what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to go with the first option. That was, uh... This game has a lot of options. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to take this the next time. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Alright, let's go see what Rich is up to. Oh. I can see in, I can see inside and hear what's going on in there. What, what luck! Rich is talking with a beige dog. It looks like a golden retriever, but at the same time, not quite. A hybrid between two species, maybe? Hey, Rich, what can I do for you? Good morning to you, too. I came to ask you a favor. The canine rolls his eyes, hands on his hips. He seems a little annoyed. It's easy to guess that this sort of thing is uncommon with the Lombaroo. Well, of course. Go ask. Rich then explains to him how he had found me on the beach and that he had brought me home. After he's done telling the whole story, he gives the dog a small smile. So, I guess you want me to enroll him in school. Why are you going to the suspicious-looking hangar to ask someone to enroll a person in a school? This is not at all weird. <laughs> as smart as ever. The dog sighs and rolls his eyes again, before leaving to another room, closing the door behind him. Richardson pulls his phone out of his pocket and types something. So there are smartphones here too, huh? I wonder if the technology is the same as in my world. And take this opportunity to look deeper into this hangar, which intrigues me to no end. I like the outside, which appears abandoned. The inside is well maintained. No dust in sight, no debris. But even so, I don't see any machinery or furniture inside. It's as if no one lives here. Or not quite. In the background, I see a, a, a couch? I blink a few times as I look deeper. There's indeed a couch and some other furniture in the corner. A giant television, many video game consoles, a bookcase full of game boxes, and several other others full of manga and various books. Does the dog actually live here? As I look around a bit more, I notice that there are five other rooms. I wonder what could be in them. After a few minutes, the dog returns with an envelope, with, which, which takes with a smile. Thanks! I owe you one! You owe me a lot already. Come on now, whoosh, I have stuff to do. After ruffling the canine's hair, which makes him grumble in annoyance, Rich heads for the door. I run at full speed back to his house to get there first. I don't want Rich to know that I followed him! Fortunately, I have time to catch my breath before he comes back to relax on the f and relax on the futon. When he returns, I stand up as if nothing had happened. I'm home! Sorry it took me so long! That's okay, I was watching TV while I waited, so I didn't feel that long. Rich nods approvingly, places the envelope on the table, and prepares pizza for both of us, which we eat together. As we eat, Rich tells me how things are in this town. Local customs, among other things, and points of interest, like the stores, the park, the movie theater, etc. Why wouldn't he take you to the hospital if he found you on a cra on the beach in a cra like uh, next to a crashed plane? <laughs> First place I would go is the fucking emergency room. Except for a few details, this world is very similar to mine. There's a complete economic system, and several species live together in the city, as well as in many others, despite some problems. For example, the canines are in conflict with the felines. What else is new? Rodents and rabbits are at odds with the vulpines, as well as other examples like that. Honestly, seeing how this world is so close to mine, I can live here without any problems. Oh yeah, by the way, how'd you get the how'd you get the meat? I hope you don't. Yeah. I'll pause it right there. All right, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Have a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.